I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. It's about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Join movement expert Aaron Alexander as he dives into the minds of the foremost innovative healthcare thinkers on their approach to optimal health and wellness. Align Podcast. Welcome back to Align Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander. Today's beautiful episode was with my new friend, Miss Lauren Roxburg, and she is the author of The Power Source. Uh, and she just released it just in the last like couple weeks. So I'm really excited to bring this conversation to y'all. Um, power source, the hidden keys to ignite your core, power your body, release stress, and realign your life. Um, really fun conversation took place inside of my sauna here at the house and like a somatic components to various different illnesses in the body, um, how we, ho- we hold stress in various different parts, and a lot of good stuff. Hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for jumping on to the website, alignpodcast.com, A-L-I-G-N podcast.com on there. You can start the five-day movement challenge, which I think is very valuable, and people have been really digging it, so that is validation. Thanks, y'all, for that. Um, Five simple videos, and it's fundamental things I think everybody needs, so I hope you enjoy that thing. If you have any questions, hit me up at alignpodcast, A-L-I-G-N podcast on Instagram. I'm happy to help. Um, thanks so much to Four Sigmatic for supporting this podcast. Those guys have been, I've been using Four Sigmatic mushrooms for the last like probably two years and they make this amazing tea or these amazing tea beverages with all the good mushrooms. So lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, all the good ones. Uh, they have cocoa, they have like chocolate bars. They're like, they're amazing. And uh, you can get yourself 15% off if you go to Four Sigmatic, F O U R S I G M A T I C dot com slash align. And on there, you can get yourself a little discount and try out some mushrooms. I recommend trying the Reishi. Reishi is great for uh, down regulation. So, especially like before bed or if your muscles are tense or anything like that, try that stuff. Um, cordyceps, really great for getting you all jazzed up. We're going to do some jazzercise. I think that's it. That's the, that's what we got. I hope you enjoy this conversation and I um, hope you're having an exceptional day. Forcingmatter.com slash aligned. And that's it. That's all. Here we go. Align podcast. All right, here we go. So, about to record a little podcast with Miss. Do you go Low Rocks? Yeah, Low Rocks. Low Rocks. <laughs> little Low Rocks. That's like a rapper name. That's what Yay. we're going to do. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to slowly shut this door. Okay. Slowly shut the door. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Leanne. All right. Make sure that that guy is. Double check that, that guy's recording. All right. Bye, sweetie. Thank you. She seems lovely. She's amazing. Big fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Many guys are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Um, Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Thanks for, Thanks coming for over. having me. I appreciate it. What time yeah. do you have to leave leave this place? Um, Vanquish you know, like, my, my sauna. Sorry, slash. is that in your way? No, it's okay. 12, if I leave here, 1240? 1240. Should we good? Right, do we have cool. enough time? That's cool. How long do you usually go? Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, anywhere from like hour-ish or something like that. Okay. Is the typical, the typical. Perfect. Um, so congrats Hello. on the book. <laughs> yeah, I cross my legs. I'm like, I do too, I'm like normally a weirdo. Too. You're going to learn no, more. I'm, You're going to learn I think that actually, I think we're both as weird as each other. So Yeah. So how the heck was the book writing process for you? Um, it was amazing, I have to say. I mean, it, it was like a lot of late nights. I have two little kids. So I have an almost two-year-old actually next week and then an almost six-year-old. Mm. So, you know, usually I see clients or do events or teach classes during the week. And then I'll have like what do they call it? The second shift, you know, after the kids go down. So I did some late nights, but totally worth it. So it took me on quite a journey. What was the inspiration for it? Um, actually, so I've been, well, where do we start? (laughs) Um, so the reason why I'm doing the work that I do is because when I was 16, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer and I was taking her to, we were living in NorCal and I was taking her to Stanford University to get like the best treatment with the best doctors supposedly. And um, I would take her once a week and she'd get, you know, injected with poison. And I was like, what is going on here? So I would ask the doctors like, where does cancer come from? And they would say, well, you know, it's environmental or it's genetic. And I'm like, uh, what else? So like, well, or we don't really know. And I'm like, okay, there needs to be more 
like we need to figure this out. So I, at 16, I was kind of put on this journey really early on to study holistic healing. And my mom would like read Deepak Chopra and she was into like Wayne Dyer and Marion Williamson and all those self-help things. So I sort of just had that open mind already. And I went on a journey and instead of going traditional like medicine, because here I was at Stanford university talking to these doctors who didn't know, I decided to um, go on this holistic healing journey. So I was an athlete as well. I played water polo, was a swimmer, all American swimmer, very strong and um, with a lot of force behind it, a lot of white knuckling my way through life. Mm. And um, then the stress of my mom being sick, she did end up living for another 16 years, but then she actually passed away when I was graduating from my SI school training, Mm. which was kind of crazy too. But she lived another 16 years of healthy living. So what do you think about the whole like psychosomatic components to like the development of cancer in the body, for example. Like, have you ever oh, heard, heard? Of course. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> I mean, my thoughts are that 99% of all illnesses come from, you know, a lowered immune system and emotional stuff hmm. as an awakening. So um, I was, I think I learned that from watching my mom be sick too. What do you think with, with I've, I've heard specifically with cancer, it's like, uh, what is it that you're always nurturing others and never nurturing yourself? Sometimes that'll manifest. Did you say breast cancer? Or did mm-hmm. I make that up? No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard that that's like a, a consistent pattern with that, but it's something that I don't know anything about. And every time I talk about it, I'm like, Ooh, like I feel hesitant. <laughs> no, I know you're right. It's bold, right? It's, I mean, I do talk about it because I saw my mom be a victim and hold a lot of resentment because my dad had left her. And then like two years later, she got diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. My dad left her when I, we were, I was 14 and then six, you know, she got it when I was 16. So for me, that was like huge. And I think I didn't realize it's a funny story. Actually, when she did finally pass away, like I said, I was in the training for structural integration and finishing, but also I went to, uh, for some reason I was called to in at the seventh ray, that place in Topanga. Have you been there? I love that. Oh, you would love that place. It's such a cool, like hippie vibe, beautiful restaurant brunch place. But then they have this amazing bookstore, like old school bookstore. And so I went into the bookstore. I was called into the bookstore by my intuition. And I, this book fell off the shelf like three days after my mom had died and the book was called anatomy of spirit by Carolyn mice or mace. You say Carolyn mace. And it was just a game changer. So she talked a lot about how emotional issues are really where disease comes from Mm. and how there's like these archetypes too. Do you think there's specific patterns that will lead to disease manifesting in specific parts of the body? I do. I do. How does that work? I know, right? It's crazy. (laughs) Um, I think it's very still mysterious at this day and age, but breast cancer, they even have research now that a lot of breast cancer stuff is from being a martyr and like doing too much and not spending enough time on yourself too and being a victim and holding resentment in the armpits and all that stuff. Specific parts. It's okay if you're not like an expert on on, (laughs) on this. At some point you're just like, oh, I'm not actually sure. Yeah. um, you know, like anger and the liver and specific organs carrying certain emotions. Have you? Yeah. I mean, I believe in that. I would love to learn more about that, like, and take classes on it and everything. I mean, again, I'm not an expert in that, but I do see, which is what my book is based on, like areas where we hold this stress and congestion and the, and I call them the power centers. They do line up with chakras, but they're basically, my new book is based on how we have these five centers. And this is from working with people hands on for like the last 12 years, essentially, and feeling where the buildup and the congestion, I like to call it plaque. You know, it's like a blockage. Um, so that's where just, I guess we would call it a pattern that you sort of see generally in each individual. Some people have it more in their pelvic floor. Some people have it more in their jaw, their diaphragm. I know you know what I'm talking about because you do the hands on work too. So yeah. lungs, heart, organs, um, belly. So the five centers are pelvic floor. Then we have the deep gut, which is the be- the gut, the st- I mean, I call it the deep core, but it's the guts and the lower back and the sacrum. And then the diaphragm and lungs is the upper core. And then the heart and shoulders basically is the fourth core. And then the fifth is jaw, neck, throat, cranium. How do people start to assess what's happening in their bodies on their own? Oh, I mean, it's visualization. Like I do visualizations through the book. So I have people do a body scan and sit and go inside and see what's going on. So I think that for me, that's been really helpful, especially teaching classes on this is like 
getting people to sit with themselves. We like stretch and we breathe and we get connected and then we sit and do a little like body scan and visualize each area. So I talk about the anatomical parts of the body, but then also the emotional parts as well. Yeah. Have you ever heard <clears throat> people have back pain will have trouble visualizing those parts of their, of their spine? Yes. And so if you go through like, and so that's something that I'll do with, with people and myself is have them visualize. I said, like, imagine you're like a splunker. <laughs> and you're going through and you have your little headlamp and you're exploring all the different parts of your body and Love it. around your guts and your abdomen and your pelvis mm -hmm. and your, you know, your skull and I see if there's any places that are darker and denser and harder for you to visualize. Amazing. And typically in places that are harder and darker, more plackier, mm -hmm. use that word, <laughs> um, oftentimes there's either like some degree of disassociation and oftentimes there's some degree of like pain around those areas. Totally. 100%. But even worse would be numbness. Mm, <laughs> you know, like pain know. is an indication yeah. that the body's at least like trying. I know. When yeah. it's numb, it's like, okay, I'm checking out. That's what happens in the pelvic floor. So mm. many people have lost the neuromuscular connection to that part of their body. So awakening that is hugely, I mean, in my work, I know, in structural integration, rolfing, it's, it's a big part of the work as well. Yeah. So why pelvic floor specifically? Why are you putting so much focus on that? Um, because for me, I think just in ha being an athlete and being really tight, like a really tight person, like I could not touch my toes, super inflexible from overtraining. And, um, I mean, my teacher was like, you have the tightest pelvic floor and jaw that I've ever seen or one of the basically. And that was when I was in the school in the training back in 2009. And, um, and then I, you know, as an athlete, I attracted a lot of athletes and I showed them what helped me gain more flexibility, range of motion, more ability to get into the parasympathetic state of the nervous system, you know, rest, digest and heal. So I shared that with a lot of the pro athletes that I've worked with and they were just like blown away by the hip mobility and, um, the ability to jump higher and have a quicker reaction and have a better sex life too. Mm. So more control in the bedroom for the dudes. Say more about that. <laughs> um, well, just working with a lot of these, like I said, these pro athletes, it just, I just realized how incredibly powerful it is and how disconnected we become as a culture from the pelvic floor because it's either all or nothing. It's either we're very Puritan, like it doesn't exist or we're all about porn you know what I mean? So there's no kind of in between. So I think for me, it just I think oftentimes those are conflated. The more Puritan and it doesn't exist, the more into yeah, like exactly nasty porn you are. Exactly, because they're hiding <laughs> it all, right? You can pretty much tell. Like the more I like know. We walked past this place the other day. Or me and a friend were walking there, like visualizing, like, oh, that'd be great to live in that house or whatever. Very easy yeah. to do in LA. <laughs> I know. Um, and the one place it just looked like so regal and presidential, and all yeah. the bushes were perfectly clear. I'm like. They've got people in their closet, I'm sure. Right? Totally. <laughs> they, don't trust that person. I know. Oh, yeah. My husband and I joke, we'll, wa we'll watch people walking down the street. I'm like, oh, that person needs a pelvic floor release. <laughs> so what does that mean? <laughs> so that means, I mean, I've what done would, hands on pelvic floor. Indication, though? Indication? Yeah. It would be someone that just walks really tight and rigid. Like, I always say, like, a stick up their ass, you know? Mm -hmm. Someone like... You know, you look at like, I've, I'm sure you have to, I've studied like how people walk in other places in the world or just move in general, like in Brazil, they have that hip movement, you know, the undulation in Africa. It's like, but in the westernized cultures, because we've become so uptight, we've just been clutching and kind of contracting too much in our culture and not expanding and creating space and letting shit go. Basically. Where do you think that comes from? Um, probably from the Pur Puritans, you know? Hmm. Maybe, so like, oh, from re religion, of course. Yeah. Right? So Sweeping it all under the carpet, pretending like everything's perfect. Why do you think they do that? <laughs> why? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like we're <laughs> kind of going the other direction now in the world, right? We're all like trying to be a little more open and raw and real and feel more. I think people lose the sensation of feeling and they just stop feeling. And so they just start only thinking. Yeah. So they lose the connection to the body and sensuality and, you know, connection. Yeah. I wonder what the value of that was, like at a cultural level. Control. Mm. Power. Right? For someone who? is better than someone else, so you have to instill fear in order to control the masses. Now we're coming into a world of everyone is empowered. There are no more gurus. We're living in more of a state of equality than ever. I mean, I know it seems like we're not, but we have made a lot of progress, and the universe is pushing us in that direction, too, 
with the rise of the feminine energy in the minorities. Why do you think that's happening? Because we need it to to survive on fucking planet Earth. <laughs> right. <laughs> in Earth school. <laughs> it's true. God dang Earth school. Yeah, I mean, there's too much <laughs> suffering, you know? It's like, we gotta, the light needs to keep outshining the dark, so. Mm. That's what equality is, right? Yeah. So what do you think of, with these, I find it really endlessly fascinating, the, the connection of, of personality and your physical body. Oh, yeah. And so in, in the book that I'm doing, I have these archetypes of, of postural personalities. Amazing. I yeah. love that. You know, and so you can see that with people. Yeah. And there's certain people that carry themselves in such a way. Like the one guy's like Swall Steve, where he's like, you know, upright and mm-hmm. kind of like stick up his ass kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, totally. He, he presents as though he has everything taken, you know, under control. Yeah. And his shoulders are back and all that. But what you don't realize typically is that he's hiding the instability in his low back. And if you look Ooh, deeper into yeah. it, there's actually a lot of instability there. That's why he feels the need to Amazing. put on this front. Yeah. You know, and then there, you know, there's, there's like five of them in total, but it's interesting how our, that is going to be so helpful (laughs) for people to see I am that person and how can I then enhance who I am when I have that awareness and that knowledge, then you can create the shift. Eventually you want to get to a line Dana. Yeah. She didn't give a fuck. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's just in alignment. She's good. Oh, she's I love it. She's not trying to front. She's not trying, awesome. to, trying to present yeah. anything. She's just like beautiful, true with whatever's happening in the moment. So there's no need to, to posture in any one which direction. There's no need to hide. I love it. You know, and so when we're hiding, you yeah. know, emotionally, we mm-hmm. hide physically. And it's so interesting true. that like scoliosis, for example, is, is the highest instance of scoliosis am- is among, from what I've read, is, is adolescent girls. Oh, yeah. You know, so you're going through that, that really interesting time where, like, your chest is changing shape and there's blood mm-hmm. coming out of your body and mm-hmm. boys are looking at you and you're looking at yourself and it's like, oh, God, like, oh, just, like, hide. Coil in. Coil yeah. in. Totally. You know, so because it, it would be inappropriate to, like, get a box and put that over yourself. Yeah, it's but the like, medical okay, world. It's like, I'll just kind of shrink into this body. Oh, my God, no totally. No one will see me. <laughs> But the medical world is like, oh, no, that's just completely genetic. Like, they're not giving any other alternatives to those things, too, which I think that's why it's really important, the work we're doing, because we can kind of bridge that gap Mm. because we have tangible results. And, you know, I mean, I work with a lot of doctors and surgeons and orthopedics, and they're like, they come to me to do the work versus going to have surgery. So I think that there is a movement happening in our field of people with fascia and, you know, sensory awareness to have to sort of shed the light on what you're saying about those postural imbalances and how that affects like po- i always say posture influences personality mm-hmm. you know or other way around posture is personality yeah or personality influences posture you could say it either yeah, way same, but like two mm-hmm. ends of the same rope yeah it is so what do people what do people do with this information why is it how is it relevant um <laughs> <laughs> well, because knowledge is power, right? Well, Awareness is the first step to change. Um, because I think people are suffering more than ever with just the bombarding of, you know, work and everything. Like people just have trouble having work life balance and it almost becomes an addiction. So I think we need to have a different model for what work is because we're all going to work at night now. I mean, that's kind of the nature of it, right? So we need like more than th- two days of a weekend. We need a three day weekend or. You know, I think there's a lot of different ways. We just, who's going to take the time to do that and who's going to start that? You know, there's a company in New Zealand, a pretty big company. My husband's from New Zealand, so we're big, you know, we love New Zealand. It's the best country, I think, on the planet. The best um, country. It is. Damn. It's pretty incredible. That's good. There, Everyone there is so happy and just, it's (laughs) the earth is so clean. The water is pristine. Anyway, I could go on and on, but they have, there's a company there that just started doing a three day weekend and they're having actually a lot more productivity than, you know, all the other companies. So same thing happens when you, when kids go to school later. Yes, it's I like know. Another whack thing. It's like, oh, they need to get to, they gotta get up there. It's like, dude, kids, like they don't. They fall need that for their brain later. development. Exactly, they yeah. need that rest. They're ma- they're forming the schedule based off of like a sixty year old person that goes to sleep at like eight <laughs> thirty. Totally, like, dude, your thirteen year old doesn't want to go to sleep at eight thirty. I know, it's <laughs> so true. I know. <laughs> yeah, but they found that that um, it was I don't know where they did it exactly, but people can Google it. But when they put the the uh, start time of school, I think it was just like 30 minutes or maybe it was an hour. 
they sound oh, just yeah. everything got better grades got better yes. and less incidents of like you know de- detention like mm-hmm. everything was just like oh and they're like better human beings because they That's got that amazing. extra hour of sleep well who doesn't want more sleep right these days yeah <laughs> so what are you what's inspiring for you now uh you mean for my book or in general, Life in general or yeah what's inspiring me everything i mean i'm so excited to just get this message to people about kind of just again what we're saying like empowering them with the information about fascia and the sensory organ and the sensory system and feeling again and getting into feeling that sense of connection i think that we've just lost as a society and um so for me i'm excited because when i teach a class it's like now kind of similar to when I would do a private session. And I used to think, oh, I have to be with someone one-on-one to get the impact to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've felt this too, but you know, doing the hands-on work is like witnessing a miracle every time. So it's in a way it's so fulfilling. It's like being in a lab. It's like seeing your own research like happen right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then hearing what people are saying too, and like how it's affected their whole life and their lifestyle and their body and everything. So Now, when I teach my classes, I sort of am able to incorporate all of those um, just from teaching or from doing the work for so long. I feel like I can now communicate it in a way that people can then, as I've been called the body whisperer in the media, like I want everyone to become their own body whisperer Mm -hmm. because we are our own body whisperers, right? Mm Because we know we embody this work, right? Don't you feel that way? Hopefully. (laughs) Of course you do. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're doing what you're doing. It's amazing. What's challenging for you? Um, You know, it's funny right now. Challenging is like, to be honest, like saying no to things. Yeah. Because there's so much opportunity. I think there's just so many people are really excited about this work that I have to like say no to people now, which is hard. That's the hardest thing for me to say no to a private client. But now I have my online offerings and my equipment, and my tools. So I feel really good about having that because I know they work. You know what I mean? So yeah. the biggest thing right now is that balance between motherhood and being an educator. Did you ever have any doubts as you were going through the, the book process? Doubts? Um, no, because I had the whole concept. The philosophy was written five years ago. So like that system was there. And then I was able just to expand and make it just more all like holistic healing, like um, a, a holistic healing program. So that to me, was actually really fun. Yeah. But as far as like writing a book in general, like it's just, it's intense. Like, you know, you have deadlines and you have things that you have to get to. And I'm like, I want to take my time with this. And I'm like more of a, I guess, a creative person, not as much of like a linear, like critical thinking person. Yeah, so right. I go in and out of, like I, I mentioned before. Oh yeah. Really? I have existential crises pretty much every day. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't amazing, wait to read your book. It's amazing how fast you can go or I can go from like, like I, I mentioned before, like, wow, this is just the most important thing. Like everything's in perfect alignment. Yes. Like all the stars, <laughs> like, oh my God. To like, oh, this is just all shit. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I know. No, no, I hear it's like, you. It's like within minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's. When you're doing something that's so unique and so new and so innovative and like I like to say, like, I think what you're doing, what what we're doing is we're rising above the fluff. Mm. Like it's never been done before what we're talking about, you know? Mm. So I think when that happens, like in the way that we're communicating it, interpreting it, I'm not discrediting any of the methods we've studied or learned. Yeah. But when you're doing it that way and making it that cool and unique, it's like you know, you're going to question yourself, like, is this legit? But then I'm like, think of all the different things that I've seen over the years yeah. and seen it all in action. You know, Awakening the Tiger, Peter Levine? No. You ever heard that one? Oh, oh maybe I've heard of it. But oh, it's so good. Is it good? Okay, I'll read it. One of the things it gets into there that I, I find really interesting is people's... So it really, he, he discusses how animals naturally in nature, when they go into like the immobilized kind of part of their nervous system kind yeah. of sh- shut down like fight uh-huh. fight or freeze which is something yeah. we don't talk about so much um, to come out of that immobilization they go through this like kind of tremoring convulsive repatterning release thing that's almost like a reboot of their nervous system yeah and it, this is kind of a separate subject but um, 
I think it's something that's interesting with like the way that we hold trauma or perhaps even doubt in our own bodies. We don't really allow ourselves to go through that whole convulsive tremoring process mm, of, of release. Yeah. Like, typically, culturally, mm-hmm. for me at least, you know, if something bad happens, it's more like shame will pop up. You know, you don't want anybody to know that something, mm. you're like, oh, I, I slipped down some stairs or something like that. And it's like, well, that was just embarrassing. Like, move on. Yeah. You know, whereas like an animal in nature, after they have some type of like fight, yeah. flight, you know, near death experience, mm-hmm. they have that space to go through and actually release all that. I mean, it gets into to in there is if he doesn't, if the animal isn't able to actually go through that whole process of releasing, uh-huh. then that stored, stuck stress mm-hmm. is actually in the body. Yeah. And then that's what leads to different types of disease and such. Absolutely. That's exactly what my book is all about. It's, you know, that idea of that stuck energy. And I mean, that's why I teach the classes I teach as I like to call it movement medicine. It's like, I didn't make that up, but I just think it's an easy way to kind of explain it all in one rather than it's yoga or it's that, you know what I mean? Like giving it sort of an all encompassing thing where it could be just two minutes of breathing and stretching and, you know, opening up your inner thighs and your hamstrings or your lower back or whatever, like just like wiggling out those swallowed emotions, you know, in your throat. Yeah. So yeah. Have those you are... experienced trauma like that in your life that you felt um, like, like needed to come out? I mean, I f- experienced trauma from losing my mom when I was super young. Yeah. I mean, it was not that young, but like 31 years old to me is kind of young. Um, yeah. So that was, you know, I mean, it's like, it's, it, I mean, it's all relative, right? I mean, I haven't like seen anyone killed right in front of me or anything like that, yeah. but I think everyone has a level of trauma from childhood, from, you know, just again, being in that reactive state. And that might mean that just a, uh, a parent is really controlling and trying to force you to be someone that they want you to be. Do you have a sense That's of, traumatizing. Do you have a sense of trauma that you experienced in childhood? Um, You mean like something that, no, I mean, I had a pretty awesome childhood. My dad was amazing okay so when your mom passed did you have a sense of how that expressed itself in your body um i think i felt it when she first got diagnosed when i was 16 as i was going through puberty you know and i was going through all those developmental things and then just feeling this sense of like wow someone could be at stage four of cancer like it just like pulls the rug out from under you Mm. You know, so she was sick for a year. She lost her hair. She went through that whole thing. So, um, but no, I mean, I wasn't like abused. Is that what you're asking? No, or no, in no. an accident Any, or... anything like what well, you said, ever you said everyone has trauma. So, yeah, so... definitely. I mean, I think it's all relative what the trauma is. The trauma could be literally like not getting the job you want. And yeah. I think everyone has a micro trauma throughout the day. It's like, that's the reactive response be- response because we're stuck in, that old model right so i think my whole thing is like and i'm sure you believe the same is like it's really about this the busyness of life is not going to get less busy so we as a human species have to evolve we have to evolve our bodies our brains and our ability to learn how to harness the energy we've been using for stress and use it for creative energy connection you know doing amazing things so i think trauma is a hard word because yeah, you can have someone die, you could have, you know, get in a terrible accident, you could ha- lose a leg, you could, you know, whatever it is, like, it's all relative, but it's all just the how we react and respond. Do we u- do we use it as a lesson and a tool? And or do we become a victim of it? Yeah, you know? Yeah, I wonder, it, it seems quite valuable to give space to people to allow that traumatic you know what 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 the critters do is having like the the tremors oh right you know, yeah to, to allow this space cuz if we stuff it back in yes. and get on with the day which is the standard model of mm-hmm. modernity yeah you know just keep like more coffee and just keep oh, on jamming I know. it out yeah you know and it, it's it's really interesting like sometimes when you go away you know you go on like a vacation or something like that or or you go through something stressful sometimes when you get back home you like get sick because your body finally catches up. Yeah. You're like, you I didn't know, have right? time to be sick. While totally. You like you had to be there. Mm-hmm. And then you get back. I was like, Whoa. yep. You know, I wonder if people can kind of approach that in a, like a more healthy fashion by people. I mean, me. Of- well, actually, no, now that you're saying that, I mean, having two births can be considered traumatic because yeah. it's like this otherworldly experience that you then have to really recover from. 
And yeah. like sometimes people just go back to work after like two weeks or whatever. And like, totally, you know, so like I guess in a way that's very traumatic. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, because your body is and then has to heal. So it expands and then it has to heal. And so in a way, I guess, you know, any woman that has a child has that kind of trauma what do you too. Think about, what do you think about having, you know, of going through the whole menstrual cycle each month as a woman and that not oh. just being like totally not a part of I know, right? No, I'm such a believer in like getting to know your rhythms and taking charge of charge of your fertility. And I'm totally not, I'm against birth control pills Mm -hmm. because I think they are, we're seeing some really not such good things coming up for women that, and I was on the pill for from 16 to like 25 and I went off the pill because my teach my doctor was like you know your mom had breast cancer you should really think about going off of it because you think about anytime you add hormones you're going to be more susceptible for cancer Mm. right so anyway I went off of it and I didn't get my period for a whole year and the doctors were like the OB you know western medicine doctors were like oh you know we don't know what's wrong with you I'm 25 years old like you probably won't be able to get pregnant and I'm like you know what fuck you that is not happening for me so I went and found an acupuncturist and that's sort of again put me on more of this holistic healing journey so yeah it'd yeah be, it'd be it'd be interesting i don't know a lot about this subject nor do i do a lot of things i talk about here but, <laughs> it's okay. but it'd be it's interesting how we have like this western engine that just it just goes and then there's all these biological experiences that are happening at oh an my individual gosh, level right? yeah that it's almost like you you've in order to keep up in that that system you have to kind of just like put those suppress those I know biological aspects of yourself and just keep on keep on trucking right I know (laughs) like you only ovulate for like 48 hours in the month like if you know when you're ovulating then you can be really you know specific about using a condom you know what I mean yeah yeah and just taking that time for yourself like I wonder the value if there's some deep evolutionary psychological value to going through that experience Oh, yeah, I think there must be, there must be. I mean, they say the moon cycle, right? So for women, when we get our period, we're supposed to not really be doing anything for those few first few days because your body is eliminating and it's so much flow. And my meditation teacher talks so much about that. She also does astrology as well. And, um, you know, we talk, she, she's been telling me that for 20 years, like, you know, you got to chill when it's your, and you know, don't be like overworking out and you need to relax and let your body do what it's supposed to do. And you know? I think there's like a psychological purge with that at the same time. There must be. How mm-hmm. could there not? Right? Yeah. I mean, there must be. It's a shedding. Yeah. As they say. So. So I wonder what that. Do men have that? We have a, a I know, monthly right? psychological purge. I must. You just keep trucking. You guys just need to keep moving that energy through. <laughs> right? <laughs> what <do we laughs> Whatever do? it takes. Men have um, a, men have kind of like a PMS thing too, I believe. They have some type oh, yeah. of cyclical something I mean, throughout the month. It kind of makes sense, right? We go we go with the cycle of the moon. We, you guys must too. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, just accepting accepting all the different levels of your It's like I was talking to somebody today and they were talking about how they feel bad about being in this relationship with this guy Mm. and it's, you know, it's like, but they take, the guy takes such good care of them. Mm. And, but the thing that is the most important that you can't be apologetic about is just the way that you're feeling. Yeah. You know, as long as you're consistently true with the way that you're feeling in any yeah. situation, mm-hmm. then there's no apologies. Like, you mean that I'm hot right now? <laughs> oh, should we, should we I'm just kidding. The, should we the no, I'm just messing with I'm here. totally messing Low with rocks. you. <laughs> no, I'm totally we're joking. Here. We'll do a little no, no every, honestly, every I'm, I literally, the truth, no, I was Lauren. just saying that because of what you said. <laughs> oh, all right. That's good. He's good I like it. I love infrared sauna. It's like my home. I love it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Um, you were oh. just saying about the the idea of having those oh, authentic feelings. Oh, as long feelings. as you're consistently honest with everything that comes yeah. up, then it's there's nothing to be apologetic for, including your And there's your nothing to stuff experience. back in, right? And there's nothing to stuff back mm-hmm. in. But the second that you're you you go through a place where it's you're dishonest the way that you're feeling, or or you know, you know, it's like you're ashamed of your biology, which is super common. Um, that's just asking for problems. Mm-hmm. I know. Well, I think that you bring up a really good point because really we all need to like be our own doctor in a way too. We can't just like go, Oh, I'm going to go to the doctor and expect them to know everything. Like we need to know ourselves and get to know ourselves better. How do people do that? 
I think getting to know, like, I think, you know, being in the state of fight or flight and stress and adrenal fatigue, you lose all connection to your bodily functions. You don't have the sensation of feeling the butterflies in your stomach and you feel the weight of the, is on the, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulders. You feel like, you know, you're depressed. So you're hunched over, you're hiding all of those things probably that you talk about in your work as well. I mean, I feel like, you know, getting to know that sensory feeling again, like I talk a lot about intuitive eating and listening to your body and people are like, which diet should I do? I'm like, really, like, there's a bunch of different ways to eat out there and a lot of knowledge, but you really have to get to know what works for your body because everyone's so different, you know, so being, you know, in stillness once a day, even if it's for like two or three minutes, just to feel your system again, mm. getting into that parasympathetic state to actually feel and allow your system to reboot. Um, and I like to use my, you know, my method of movement to help people tune in and feel it and then remove whatever they've been holding or carrying around, whether it's trauma or just a reactive thing or anger or resentment or fear. And then we remove that through the movement and then we replace it with an elevated emotion of either gratitude or hope or passion or purpose or sense of community or connection. So we do a lot of that emotional stuff in my work with the movement part as well. Cause why not? We're doing it. It's like, we're sitting in the sauna and we're talking, we're getting a benefit of that. We're multitasking, right? Got to multitask. Yeah. I love it. You, you talk about some other angles that people can be working with, with uh, like changing nutrition and mm -hmm. is there some other directions to look in working with the body beyond just like self care, foam rolling movement <laughs> type approaches um, or talk therapy or, you know, yeah, I mean, I think again, it's like, just getting yourself into the place of calm so that you can feel again and listen to your inner voice and your inner being and get more on your path. People ask a lot about self-care. And I think for me, like, you know, you can take baths, which are great. You can roll, you can do yoga, you can work out. But like the reality is like, it's really about what you do with your time because time is the most precious commodity. So it's a choice. So what we do with our time is really based on our choice. And that's really about, I mean, to me, that's what an empowered life is, is choosing things that resonate with your whole being and your whole system that you are really enjoying every moment. That's really to me. I mean, I know things we have to do sometimes, right? Like family or, you know, like there's things that we have to do, but I think also like the idea of conscious language using, instead of saying, I have to go pick up my daughter from school, I get to go pick her up or I have to go, I have to pay my rent or I have to pay my mortgage. I get to pay my mortgage, yeah. you know, like, so conscious language that creates a shift as we say, like our words in a way are there like a prayer or they have a vibration. Mm. So what do you think about crystals? I like crystals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, I think they get a lot. I mean, a lot of, a lot of my pro athletes are like, no, I'm not going to do crystals, yeah. and, but I'm like, you know what? It's an offering. Some people it's not their jam and that's fine. So I like, I feel like, again, you got to go with what works for your, for what you believe in, what you feel would work. Do you think there's scientific validity to I the, mean, effect of the, the claims of, of different Maybe it's psychosomatic. Things? Maybe it's just this. I mean, they're okay. So the idea is that it's the electromagnetic energy from the earth. So I believe in earthing. I believe in forest bathing. I believe in it's really important for us to be connected to the earth. So if the crystals are part of the earth and they're, we're laying with them under our bed, we're, you know, having them with us in our pocket We're you know, they're in our car with us to ground us. If that's a part of earth, then yeah, I think so. I mean, I, there, I mean, there's, it's hard to say what resource I would say to go to for that science, yeah. but I do think that that part of it, because they are part of the earth and we need more earth around us. To you be think grounded. You can eat different foods to affect your structure. I mean, I think that nourishing your connective tissue, like I talk a lot about bone broth and yeah. like super herbs, because herbs are great to get inflammation down. So, you know, getting inflammation down, nourishing your joints, your fascia, um, things that give you chi. It's like, I call it fascia foods, but. Yeah. Vitamin didn't C, you, didn't antioxidants. You, didn't you have specific food? Maybe I'm misremembering. I thought you had specific like foods and. Well, and we did foods like that, that connect each. with the chakras of the that match up. Even though the chakras are not exactly my like, I haven't studied that. But I was like, I kept seeing this mirror of seeing how much it co you know coordinated with the idea of these power centers. So we brought that in because those areas just feed the brain. Like there are certain things like blueberries are great for the brain for yeah. the head. You know, 
What about people that have pelvic floor issues? I mean, again, connective tissue, right? So you want to feed your you want to feed your pelvic floor, and then you have like stuff that you want to root with. So grounding stuff like ginger and turmeric, things like that that ground you. Just even sitting on the earth is really healthy for the pelvic floor too, energetically. Yeah. What is the what does grounding mean to you? And with like root like root vegetables, things yeah. that grow in the earth. Yeah. Are great for that. So why do you think there's a connection there? Um, I don't disagree with it because yeah. I, I, I feel the same way, but I also, I don't understand the kind of scientific explanation or like the, it's kind of well, a jump like, oh, they're, they're roots and you can see the roots going into the ground. So I eat that. So it makes me feel more rooted. Some of that. And well, then but I'm you're like, right. the there's probably like, not kind of, actually I'm medicine. Like, I kind of agree. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm like, I don't really see the connection. It looks similar. Well, I think <laughs> it has to do with pushing the envelope too, where we're like, you know, a lot of times science needs to catch up with us. Yeah. And this is ancient wisdom from years and years of maybe not scientifically case studies studied with like Harvard or Stanford, but studied in the holistic communities or the, you know, Ay- Ayurveda or Chinese medicine for centuries. So. Yeah. I guess it depends on those aspects too. So if a person's feeling very disconnected or ungrounded or just frenetic energy, like, yes, like which too is, much coffee, like how does too much does, coffee, but also too much energy around from technology or being in the airport. Like I find like after being on a plane, I need to like really ground myself. Like whether that's taking a salt bath to clear the energy from, you know, the electric magnet, electromagnetic energy that we pick up from going through an airport and all the security. And I mean, I don't even want to know, but I'm sure it's terrible for our bodies, Yeah, you know? <laughs> so doing more like having like a ginger tea when you get home or eating some sweet potatoes, you know, filling yourself up with those antioxidants and those, you know, root vegetables. Right. So cool. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely like a unique and new way of kind of like I like to bridge science with spirituality and sometimes you don't have the actual evidence of it, but yeah. it makes sense, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. The intuitive bits are important. Yeah. You know, if you're overly scientific about everything, like typically it takes like 30 years for, exactly. the, for the latest science to like make it into a, yeah. a doctor's office before it's like officially established. Like, okay, cool. It's in I the know. books. Well, know, like, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of wiggle room there that we could be bumping into some really cool stuff it's like well wait till 2040 (laughs) i know right like i feel like in you know 10 years from now everyone will have a medical intuitive Mm. but right now people are like what's that that's really woo woo like i would never want that but then there's people that are literally seeing it before an x-ray or an mri is going to see a cancer you know think a medical intuitive works i think they just are able to see things um in different layers like we have this three-dimensional world and they're able to see different dimensions where do you think they get that from source you know god however you want to say it where we come from how do they tap into that they're either born with it or they i mean I, you have to be born with it i think we're all born with it to a certain degree like we, it comes in different i mean for me it's very much i feel it i feel it in my hands i feel it in my guts i get messages on you know, I'll get like one letter or I'll get like all capital word. Let's say I'm working on with a client and I'm like, I, th- I see resentment. It's all capitals. And then I'll say, Hey, so what's going on? What are you holding on to? What do you have resentment about? Mm. You know, everyone has a different way. Some people literally see the layers and see the actual like, you know, disease starting to, to like, you know, it's like we were saying about cancer, like Everyone has cancer cells. It's just when the immune system goes down, the inflammation goes up, you're more susceptible for getting sick, right? So yeah. what affects, what's the number one thing that affects inflammation, an acidic environment is stress. Yeah. So that's, I think what you and I are both all about is like getting people to not be a victim of stress yeah. and to really harness that energy. I have a feeling that every person some people have different affinities towards certain things, but every mm-hmm. person starts off with a really strong intuition. Yeah. And then you're kind of taught to disbelieve it throughout school, mm-hmm. you know, and then you're kind of in this strange place of like, you just have all these layers of disbelief around your own potential. Yeah. And then it's like this new process, this new rebirthing process. Maybe that's like what, you know, the whole crucifixion, crucifixion of Christ and like, yeah. that, like all the, those stories that are repre- repre- representative of, mm-hmm. you know, of like kind of letting go of that disbelief. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I feel like 
well, I mean, if you really think about like where, how are we here right now? Like it's pretty fucking miraculous. You know, if you think about it, like it's a miracle that we're here on planet earth, like doing this, like there must be something more to it than just like driving in our cars and rushing to work and you know. Yeah. What do you think it's more to it? I mean, I just think we're all here to learn a lesson, um, connect to our gift and help the world or the universe or the consciousness be better. So why? What's the point? What's the point? Um, <laughs> like, why I do we need mean, to learn these lessons? I Who know. cares? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, what's the end goal with these damn lessons? I, I mean, I've <laughs> talked to many people in the spiritual world about this and really the, you know, the, the idea is learn the lesson now so that you don't have to come back and do it again. Mm. You know, it's like ultimately each time we grow from an experience and we learn that each thing that happened to us was actually a gift then we actually have fully evolved and then we can evolve to the next, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. No one knows what that is, but we just can, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Have you ever tried psychedelics? Um, yeah, I have. Which ones? Mushrooms. Right. Yeah. You're tried I haven't done it in a while because no, but I know all about it and I've been learning more about it. So. All right. What was your experience with mushrooms? It was amazing. Yeah. It like opens long, up a whole another. Um, I, I feel like it was about six or seven years ago. Yeah. All right. What was the circumstance? And my husband and I were in Joshua Tree. Oh, that's a good spot. It was perfect. Yeah. And we just, you know, <laughs> it was like, oh, it was, yeah, so amazing. What was the experience like? Um, I mean, we were like, oh, let's go for a walk. We didn't even move. We were just sitting there and you're just so in awe of mm -hmm. the earth, of the person that you're with, of just how amazing... Like it just opened up your eyes to all the beauty. Mm -hmm. I feel like it puts you in that mindset of, you know, just this idea of the beauty. And I think that we just get so shut down and we forget how amazing it really is. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what children do really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I know. They cruise around. Everything's amazing. They're grabbing yeah, and they're putting like stuff imagination. in their mouth. Yeah. They oh, love it. Your yeah. Eyes totally. For a really long time. You're like, it's totally chill. I know. There's no strange cultural construct that makes yes. this be strange. We're like just... Exactly. Couple things yeah. here sticking on a rock. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> I know. It's cool. Yeah, we gotta figure that shit out. I know. More of that. We do. We need. So that's the way I look at it. It's like <laughs> we all need more of that, and that'll push the envelope and make us all. I mean, what? Okay, the goal is to become enlightened, right? Maybe. I mean, maybe for some people. <laughs> or the goal is to make a billion dollars. So, yeah. but as we know, like that isn't really gonna make people happy because then it just makes you more gluttonous. Yeah. You know. My goal is just to, just to sort out these existential crises. <laughs> just, I love just, it. Just chill out, Aaron. Everything's Do fun. you want to have kids? Not for another fifteen years. Okay. How old are you? Thirty-one. Oh, perfect. Turn thirty-two in a little little bit and a little jiffy. Amazing. What's your sign? Cancer. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good one. What does that mean? Um, I think it's really <laughs> like very. Isn't it a water sign? Cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a water too. Pisces. Yeah. I'm supposed to be like hard on the outside and, and like gooey. Gooey on the inside. I think you're gooey stuff. both. Maybe. Yeah. No, I have a little bit. I have like some emotional vulnerability stuff that I've been working. I've been really? getting a lot better. Women have been very helpful for me. Yeah. That to me is like having, being emotional with women is one of the most medicinal things that I'm, mm. I'm able to do. I love that. I'm pretty sure. Well, I mean, like I think you're, like, yeah, <laughs> you're embodying both the masculine energy of this handsome, like strong, vibrant, but then you also have the feminine energy of listening and connecting and being. Mm. So you're doing a great job. Thanks. Yeah. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you feel like you fall in the masculine and feminine? I mean, scale? I think I've worked hard on in being in that balance of it. It's always a work in progress too. But I think again, like. I've always had that feminine energy, but also sometimes just some of that force and trying to push through and make things happen. Now I feel like right. I'm stepping into more of a flow and allowing and just surrendering like everyone I'm supposed to meet will, I will meet if it's yeah. meant to be every person that's supposed to get my book, will get it every person, you know, every, I don't know. I'm just feeling more of that. Like just like just letting go and just being, I mean, the, you know, it's interesting because we do have to do a lot of work to get to that point too. But like, I feel like the more I let go and allow the more amazing stuff comes in and the less, 
I mean, I don't know. It's all about age and timing and being a mom. Like there's only so much time I have to give to my work as well. So if it's not meant to be, I'm like, it's not meant to be, you know? Yeah. That's been a huge thing for me is, is not, I'm still in a bit of a pushing mode. I, I have to tell myself that I'm not, but I'm, I, yeah. I see it in certain parts. And, uh, I wonder if anybody doesn't go through the pushing mode. Well, I know because it is part of it too. We're like, we need the control, but then we need the surrender. We need to, f we need doing, we need being, we need force, we need flow. So we need both, right? To have that balance. But then, point. you know, I don't know. To be able to like step out and allow, mm -hmm. like, I like the analogy of like nature's pushing the shopping cart kind of thing. Oh, I like, like that. I didn't make this up, but like, the, you know, like you're in your, uh, Emily Fletcher told, told this to me. She didn't make it up either though. Um, but so you're like a kid. You yeah. know, and you got the little fake steering wheel in the shopping cart and you're pushing it around. <laughs> totally, yeah. And you totally have this sense of like, I'm going to get there. Like, mm -hmm. woo! Mm -hmm. And you turn left and nothing happens. You're like, what the hell? You know, you don't realize that the whole time, like, mom yeah. has got you. You know, you so can do true. All the, I you love it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> That's I'm like the universe left. has you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. It's like, but it is. You're the universe, your energy. <laughs> like, I think for me, like, and I would love for more people to do this too, is like the more we can go in and, and connect to source and channel it in, the more we then are unique and then the more ease there is. So the more we try to be like someone else or, you know, try to, you know, mimic someone else or sort of, like I was saying, be a part of the fluff, the more we have to force and push. The more we go in, connect to our true path because everyone has one, everyone has a gift. And the more we do that, the more authentic we become and the more flow there is and the more, you know, allowing and the more just amazing, ma like the magic of the unknown. Mm. You do. You read Joe Dispenza, right? Of course. Love his work. He's good. He's you amazing. I know. Right. I like, I like the um, breaking the habits of being yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one too. That's a really, and my husband's into it too. So we're kind of on that path together, you know, because yeah. it really is opening your mind and like it's perspective and. I like the idea that you are the, it's written up my wall. I don't think you would have noticed it, but you are the sum of your thoughts. Oh, I love that. I try to pay attention to that. Or thoughts become things too. Yeah. What are the most one. pestering thoughts that you have in your mind? Um, that you're like, God damn, I'm turning into this shit. I'm trying to, I try to really eliminate those. Um, really? okay. You so the sense of the lack bullshit thoughts. Yeah. Right, lack that one lack for me. Um, my mom, you know, growing up, my mom was definitely like, oh, he's struggling financially. Yeah. So just the idea of kind of opening up to there's so much there, the abundance. Yeah. Um, so that's one I've been really eliminating from my cellular vibration. Mm. How do you how do you cut it out? How do I cut it out? Um, through. I mean, I believe that those emotions live in the connective tissue. So through breath work, through awareness, through rolling, through you know, connecting and letting go of it too. I mean, it's definitely a daily practice. I do affirmations every morning when I wake up, like when the sub subconscious mind is most available before the kids get up, mm. sit up in bed. And I, you know, I say, I am open to the magic of the unknown. I am abundant. I am love. I am grateful. I am open. I am connected. I am of service. You know, I have my affirmations that I do every morning and that sets me up for the day, like beautifully. So, and then hiking, being in nature for me is like total reboot, you know? Yeah. Being that's in kind, water. That's kind of like what Levine was talking about in the Waking the Tiger stuff. You know, just giving yourself like emotions being stored in the tissues. Yeah. You know, so if you allow yourself to have a wiggle, I think like ecstatic dance and any kind oh, of dance. Oh, yes. Really like I love somatic thing. dance. Yeah. Or, Do you I mean, ever go to the yoga studio right here? Santa Monica, Santa Monica yoga? yoga? No. Mm -mm. Oh my God, the oh, best. I buy it all the time. I like how simple it is. It looks Julian like it's like is phenomenal. We should meet there for yoga on okay. Sunday morning. Cool. He does this like Sunday? this full somatic. Well, it's Mother's Day, but. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I got to have to do something about that. What, did you, what does one do on Mother's Day? We're going to brunch with my family. So Your mom's out here? Oh, sorry. Well, my Your mom is. No, yeah, my yeah, dad's coming down. And then my, my sister lives in um, the South Bay. So we're going to go down there. Is your dad's mom out here? She's passed away too. Right. So she would have been in her 90s now. So yeah. just We're old people. A... <laughs> That's good. I gotta, I gotta take that more seriously. What? I think it's an interesting thing of um, your the connection your family has to your your physical self, physical, emotional, like all all the, yeah. all the parts of yourself. You know, like I can feel if there's something off with people in like my blood family. And this could be just stories that I've been told that have now like you know I've, I've kind of like made to be true, but. Um, it feels as though there's actually like tendrils of connection there. There must be. How could there not? I, I totally believe that. I can feel it too. I mean, I think everyone can. 
They, I mean, there's that whole thing with twins, right? Yeah, right. That they can feel if that person is lost or where that, you know, like, Morphic or if they're presence. uncomfortable or. Yeah, Rupert Sheldrake's the guy that gets into all that shit. Yeah. Oh, cool. Here, 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 Rupert Sheldrake. I love all your research. Morphic resonance. Oh, cool. I have to check that I out. I don't have much of a life. So. Oh, my God. No, you have a total passion and purpose. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, anyways, you got to go to your next your next thing. Is it 40 up. already? I don't know. It's 30. Yeah, it's 40. 37. Okay. I have the world's smallest little digital clock inside the sauna. <laughs> I love it. That's right. Yeah, that's okay, great. so thank you so much. Of course. This is awesome. Yeah, but I really appreciate do, it. So where should people go from here? What's the, what's the best <laughs> Um. So right now, I ha- we have a website. If you buy the book, if you buy my new book called The Power Source, you can get access to my online studio for a month for free. Mm. And you just go to powersourcebook.com. Cool. You can follow me on Instagram, Low Roxborough. Dope. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yay. I, I enjoy myself. All right. <laughs> Over now. Me too. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in that conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, we got a couple things to help support that body of yours. One of which is the Align Band that people have been really loving, which I'm super grateful for. Um, it is a heavy duty resistance band, comes along with a door anchor, traveling case, and then a online video guide on how to use that thing. It's my absolute go-to travel tool. I've got it hanging literally from my door right beside me now. Um, use it regularly. Use it with clients. Uh, it can be found at alignpodcast.com slash gear uh, on Amazon. And you can also find it at Align Band on Instagram. Um, also, we finally did it. We created the Align Method online program, which focuses on unwinding the patterns of staring into technology, essentially. So forward head posture, rolled forward shoulders, rolled forward spine, kind of like just that hunchy posture thing that um, modern world is is stricken by uh, gets into how to align your physical body. So self-care, joint by joint, from ankle to knee to hip to spine to head to neck, etc. Really good stuff. Also gets into lifestyle, um, gets into morning routines, nighttime routines, how to effectively handstand, how to move on the ground. Um, people have been loving that. Thank you all for grabbing it, the ones that have. And if people have any questions about that, you can reach out at Align Podcast on Instagram. I'm happy to support. All right. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your day. Thanks for joining you. Thanks for telling your friends. Thanks for reviews on iTunes. That's it. Pow. <laughs>